Now we have our associate partner Pearson View at the 11th Education Summit. On behalf of Pearson View, I would like to invite Mr. Divya Lok Chetan Sharma sir, who is the Vice President of SAAR uh, C for the presentation. Divya Lok Sharma sir is the responsible for developing and defining vertical market presentation strategics and as well as partnering with Pearson line of business and geograph geographical business unit to growth joint business opportunities and he is also responsible for revenue generation in our region as well as leading the overall growth strategy in India. So uh, welcome sir, the dice is all yours. Thank you so much. No, first of all, I, I really love when people pronounce my name. It is Divyalok Chetan Sharma. So, thank you. But first of all, before I start, uh, a very good morning to all of you, the dignity, dignitaries, principals, teachers, leaders from the educational industry, and a very, very good morning to all of you. And before I start, first of all, I would like to thank Time to Grow Media for giving me this opportunity and this platform to be here today to talk about something interesting, if I can say that, or the product which Pearson launched some time back. And it is, this is a, 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 almost pretty much after two years, we are getting this opportunity to be here and talking with, with each other face to face. And I must tell you that in the COVID period, if there is a one ecosystem we should be thanking, besides the healthcare segment, is this education people, the principals, teachers, and everyone else. And you should please give a big applause to yourself, and we can start from there. Oh my God, I can't see anything here from, from the backside, so let me tell you one interesting stuff, okay? Before I start, let me teach you some a very simple yoga to appreciate each other. And what all you need to do is, let's just do it together. Put your hands like this. All of you, please, even at the end, okay? Sir, please view. What you need to do is, there is an air in between your hands. What you need to do is just press it hard, okay? Like this. And do it a few times. Come on. Come on. Do it. Come on. At the end. Yes, that's the way to appreciate. And this is exactly the kind of appreciation this group needs. And we all deserve this. Because yes, we contributed when everything was stopped. The teachers who learned on the fly how to teach online. They learned on the fly how to keep the discipline in those classes where people were not even talking. Right? So you do deserve that appreciation. Let me go back. Can I see my presentation here, please? My slides? Okay. So I'm here to talk about improving learning outcomes for life through standardized examination. From 2020 onwards, we are hearing a lot about new education policy. Right? We all know this. We all understand that it was the need of the hour, correct? We all agree to that, right? It was the need of the hour. What is that we are trying to do? We are trying to convert our learning to an out, outcome-based learning. That's the prime focus. We wanted to move from rot learning to skill-based. But the moment you start assessing anything, so for example, if I'm saying I have, I learned something, but how will you evaluate the outcome? How will you evaluate my skills? For that, there's something that is very important thing called examination. Okay? But examination should be such so that it's, it can give you the outcome. It can tell you that it's a standardized exam and you can figure out whether the someone has skills or not. The company I belong to is Pearson which is in the learning industry. They are, we are here from last almost 176 years. As one of the dignitaries said, learning starts very early and goes till end. And we understand that, sir, truly. We start from the higher education sector, uh, sorry, K-12 segment to higher education, and we continue to teach people when they are professionals or advancing their careers. Because that's what how the learning is all about, right? Learning cannot stop any day Every moment you just keep on learning every new thing. And that's what how the life progresses. The important piece is, 
why there was a so much of a need for any standardized examinations? Why there is a need of assessments who can tell you whether someone has that skill or not? Why it is so important? Because why it has to change? Because 86% of the students are concerned about which subject stream to choose for higher education. I am actually going, I was going through the rote learning process. Someone has to tell me because I am confused. I am not showing any skills in my schooling system till date. And that was the need of the hour and thanks to um, our Prime Minister and all the officials and dignitaries were sitting here who took, the, uh, who took some steps at some point in time in their life just to change this whole thing for us. One in three students are unhappy with the courses they pick up, about half a million undergraduates I'm talking here, right? And I'm here today to talk about a very specific product which Pearson launched, which is specifically designed for Indian universities and for the Indian students. And the product is called as, this product is called as the Pearson Undergraduate Entrance Examination. Why I'm saying that this, this test is so important? We were seeing two, three things because the time when the COVID period, when you all are trying to figure out how to teach students, learning newer tricks to teach students online, we were also thinking that how we as the world's largest learning company can contribute. That was the thing which we were actually seriously introspecting. And in 2021, we come up with the answer that yes, this market needs a standardized test which can help students and which can help universities. The problem here is, for universities, it is important to know that whether student has the right skill to do the specific course or not. And let me give you the example, and it is just an example here, please don't take me wrong. If I'm asking 10 students here, tell me what is the capital of a Brazil, what's the capital of a Finland, what's this is the formula, what the answer is going to come here. What am I getting out of this whole process? How will I know that with someone who knows the capital of a Brazil will become a better lawyer or not? Right? And that is what actually we are talking and thinking about. And we said, you know what? We have to work towards launching some standardized examination which can give enough indicators to universities that yes, the student has right skills to be able to finish this course, be able to do better in this course. Correct? And that in that in that process, what we did was we launched two examinations. One is called Pearson Undergraduate Entrance Examination for Engineering. That's a three-hour test. And the another one is called Pearson Undergraduate Entrance Examination for Non-Engineering Students. This is the two-hour test and this one is a three-hour test. What am I testing students on? If that's the question comes in, I'm testing students on. So for example, I'll, let's look at the this piece, which is the non-engineering part of it. I'm testing students on quantitative reasoning, verbal reasoning, abstract reasoning, analytical skills so that any university can say, yes, this student has adequate amount of a verbal reasoning. Because if you have to stand in front of the court and you have to finish the law, you have to read the case, you have to have the adequate right verbal skills, you have to have a right comprehensive skills, plus you have to have a right analytical and the logical skills, right? And the one, if we look at the engineering one, because besides all that stuff, we are also testing students on maths and physics. And why is that important? Because sometimes if I have given a test, I scored X number of marks in my maths, but I am scoring very high on the analytical reasoning or the logical reasoning. Universities can do take a decision that yes, he is the right student who have a better ability to become an engineer, right? Because see, we all are focusing and talking about the outcome based learning. But we also need to, in the process, we also need to figure out the methods that whether a student has the right skills to be there to learn and to show outcomes. I think that particular piece is extremely, extremely important and especially for all the principal and the teachers who are talking about. And I must share this one number and I can, if I can go back to the previous slide here, I think that's, uh, it's here only. You'll be surprised to know that we launched this examination, this particular product in 2021 mid, and even just one year straight, 160 universities are giving admission to students basis this score because they realized, they recognized the value which the product is giving to them. The step one, they can figure out that the student has the right skill to do the management course, a student has the right skills to do the law course, student has the right skills to do the engineering course, or not. 
right? I think that's something which is very, very well needed. And for the engineering, 120 universities are giving admission to students for coming to them with this Pearson undergraduate entrance examination in engineering school. You can well imagine that, right? And think of a situation, how I am, we are contributing to the process. This exam is being designed, keeping the newer education policy in mind and also the guidelines which is, the key ones are, it has to be outcome based. It has to, you have to go away from something called rot learning. You do not need to go and enroll yourself in any specific courses to, to train yourself in that. No, you are already in a school, you are already learning in the class 10th, 11th, 12th. Why do I need to join any specific, specific course to prepare for some examination? This is a non-coachable one. That's what we, we, we target about, right? It's the analytical skills. We just wanted to figure out how, what kind of a logical skills you have, what kind of a connections you can make in your brain. Can you logically identify certain things or not? That's the whole intent. But look at the situation these days. And specifically, I'm addressing to all the principal and the educators in this room. Look at the life you are going to make so much simpler you are going to make the student's life just by giving one examination, right? If he's willing to go to the engineering side, one exam and using that score, he can straight apply to 120 universities. Or, or if he's not interested in engineering, something the non-engineering, one exam and he can apply to 160 universities. Our objective was, our objective was, and I'll repeat this again, to come up with the test which is designed for Indian universities and Indian students in mind. And also keeping this in mind very clearly about the curricula which they are studying in their CBSE, ICSC, state boards, etc. We need to align, we need to help, we need to contribute to that particular market. And that's why we have uh, these two products which we just wanted to come and talk about it. What's so different? Because you may come back and say, look, we understand that. Fair enough. We agree that your examination is talking about so many good things and you can figure it out in ethical skills, etc. But what is, what else? How we are helping students? And I'll give you the one very important concept. And I can tell you this because I'm actually working in the assessment industry from last 15 years and I'm seeing this across the globe how the, all the other international examinations are being conducted, delivered, what's the thought process with the pedagogy, etc. And I am a big advocate of, right, and we can discuss and debate if needed, big advocate of that any student should be giving the examination, especially these kind of examination, I'm not talking about the school assessment, these kind of examination when he or she is most prepared mentally to give these examinations, okay? That is something which is very important. Why I am stuffing some few hundred thousand students in one room in one day, one slot, say, okay, go and take the test. No, I'm not feeling well. How you expect me to perform better, right? So that means I have to have some space. And that's why we kept all these things in mind very carefully. And I'm going to talk about some of the aspects. Number one, I'll repeat on this one. Single score is accepted by multiple, multiple Indian universities. And I'm quoting the number again. 160 is the number right now. Second is retest and the reschedule option. That basically means I have given my first attempt. Somehow I'm not happy with my attempt. I've goofed up. But I don't want to waste my year. Do I have an option to retake? Yes. This examination gives you that option of retake. And a lot of big examinations in India at this point in time are talking about this, which is something called even the IITJ examination. You do have an option to retake. Why we wanted to just put the entire student's life to just those two hours? Not fair. Something, anything can go wrong. It happens because it not, may not be my day. Students should have an option to be able to reappear and retake that examination or reschedule if something goes wrong in the same window. Third thing is, which is again, I always a very, very pro to that there should not be any negative marking in any kind of standardized examination. And that's the reason if you look at any international examination, be it GMAT, be it GRA, be it College Boards, SAT, etc., there's no negative marking. And why? If someone is sure of any question, even 90%, he deserves to answer that question. 
I don't need to be 100% all the time. Right? That's why you have a credit system. It doesn't mean you only score, that's only you're going to get the credit. Obviously, you, you, if you are 100% sure, you get a higher credit. If you're 80% sure, you get a little lower credit. You shouldn't be punishing the students. And the important piece is, no GK questions. It is good to know. But is, is it going to figure out my analytical skills, my logical skills, my abstract skills in any way, shape, form possible? No. The fourth one, any student knowing the COVID or even no COVID, I said, he sh any student should be allowed to take the test even from home or from the test center. Why I'm so big in favor of this? Why I'm asking student to get up, get to go to one test center where he's not even comfortable with the chair, seat, or et cetera, et cetera. Why can't we as a technologist, why we can't as a pioneer in the education industry, we can't go to the student and say, you know what? Feel comfortable in your own room, feel comfortable on your chair, give this test, give this test when you're most prepared to give this test. That's when I actually I just wanted to figure out what kind of a skills the student has, isn't it? And why it has to be only 9 to 12 and 3 to 5 kind of a thing or 3 to 6? Student feels comfortable giving the examination at 6 a.m. in the morning because he's the early riser, we should be allowing him to give the test. That's why it's a 24 across 7. And but you, for example, if we are living in a country where a lot of people doesn't have adequate or the all the kind of infrastructure we are looking for, so if someone would want to go to the nearby test center to give the test, should also be enabling some kind of a provision for that test. That's where we talk about the standardization so that everyone has an equal opportunity to be able to perform and do things. I'm talking about in this examination, 10 months of a long window means that it starts somewhere in October, it goes to July over. Whenever you feel most comfortable, give it. Give your first attempt in the month of November. Because most of you are the principals, your class 12 students are just getting into getting into the classes now. Let them know about this examination. Let them give the, give the test. If they score high, fantastic. Doesn't, doesn't matter. They can take a one more attempt. They can take another attempt if they don't feel happy about it. Let them practice. It doesn't need any kind of a rot learning. It's a long 10 months of a long window. They can sit at home at 6 a.m. Or few, some student says, oh no ma'am, I just only study in night. Fair enough. Give the test at 10 p.m. If you're giving for the engineering examination, you'll be done by the midnight. That's what actually I'm just trying to talk about, right? I'm not going to talk about the other two things, which is very, very common, because anytime even the student is giving the examination at 6 a.m., obviously he can contact us for any kind of a customer support. All the 160 universities, in fact, majority of them are giving and offering very, very good scholarships around this. My intent is to talk about the innovations which is happening specifically from the for the Indian students and for the Indian universities because they have a test which they can rely on and to help students pick up the right course which they are made for. Why we need to have a students like after doing the second year they realize now nah, I don't have the right skills to become a good lawyer. I should actually become a good salesman. Let's help them identify some of those things early in the process, folks, right? This is just, if you really ask me, I have no contribution in making this slide. This is more of a marketing people because when they just talk about, see how many, how good we are. There's so many industries are accepting it. So there's so many good logos. But folks, my only last few lines are, yes, we can help students who are in class 12 now or who are just graduated from class 12, right? Or just complete the class 12. There is an exam in India from Pearson. And just by giving that one exam, your student can apply to 160 plus universities. It is important that we help these students to choose the right career which is made for them. Right? And that is why the government focuses so much on the outcome-based learning. They have to show. And what I'm saying is, even if they have to show, they have to give a test in which they can demonstrate their skills early so that they can pick up the right amount of the course later. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here for talking about the Pearson undergraduate entrance examination. We are here. We have a booth here. Any principal, any educator, any, any dignitaries who want to know more about it, please do contact us. If you talk to us in the Pearson, Pearson, you will be happy to come and talk to you even in your schools, happy to come and talk to your Management, I really don't know how much time I have for the questions. Um, do I? Can I take one or two? Please, if anyone, anyone has any questions. You know what? I love 
so let me tell you what it's a great feeling to ask such a huge and a massive in educated crowd to say do you have any questions and from a student like me and when they don't ask it i feel okay i'm doing a good job here do you have sir yes please so any report has various aspects to it we do have multiple reports what is that you want to see do contact us we'll be happy and provide you as much information as you need we have done huge amount of analysis in this market because we wanted to contribute and i always say this any organization who are who is in this market should figure out an opportunity to contribute this is our way of contributing to this market you want to tell student that you know what you don't have to give 10 different entrance examination just take one save your father's hard earned money or mother's hard earned money and you can apply to 160 to 160 you know so you all the latest courses and i'll tell you one more important stuff if i always say this hear me very carefully on this one 65% of the job which will not even exist in another 10 years which we are doing today student who is in the class 12 doesn't know what he is going to do at the age of 35 and 40 right we need to prepare our students to focus on these analytical logical output output based learning and give them the methods to demonstrate the skills folks i think my time is over because that guy is starting walking up and he's trying to give me the message that your time is up so thank you so much and please give us an opportunity to talk about it and you can't clap it this way i told you the yogasan and trust me it's going to keep you young so put your hands like this press the air come on do it once more okay and do it for the the time to grow as well thank you so much guys truly appreciate i would like to request uh, arindam mandal sir from ministry of education to come on the dais and please honor divya lok chetan sharma sir who is the vice president in pearson view it was the wonderful presentation sir sir